Sadhguru Biography, Jaggi Vasudev, known as Sadhguru is an Indian yogi who teaches yoga, meditation, and frequently answers questions related to spirituality. He is known for his keen wit, humor, and ability to combine ancient Indian yoga with modern life. He founded the Isha Yoga Center, and has promoted several environmental issues. He has traveled around the world, speaking at venues from Davos to the United Nations. He promotes a spirituality which emphasizes personal transformation, clean living, and social awareness. He has been associated with aspects of Hindu nationalism. Early life, Jaggi Vasudeva was born the 3rd of September 1957, in Mysore, India to relatively affluent parents. His father was a doctor who traveled around the country. As a child, Jaggi was high-spirited with a streak of rebelliousness. He was easily bored with school, and would frequently play truant, and appear fearless in the face of authority. Rather than spend time in school, he would often wander off on his own, to the countryside, and become absorbed in nature. He owned a bicycle, and would frequently cycle on long tours. He loved sports, and outdoor pursuits, and was interested in maintaining the best physical health. From the age of 13, he took up Hatha Yoga, after meeting a 70-year-old yogi, who displayed great physical dexterity. His fearlessness, and physical strength led to a lucrative job as a snake catcher. He would not use a stick, but just catch snakes with his bare hands. He has a lifelong closeness to snakes, and the snake world. For a while, as a teenager, he threw himself into revolutionary politics, as he became concerned with social justice, but after a few years, he became disenchanted with the levels of hatred, and hypocrisy within the political movements. After school, he enrolled in a self-study course, of English literature, at Mysore University, and despite his usual erratic attendance, managed to graduate, finishing second in English literature. After graduating, rather pursuing more studies, to the disappointment of his family, he set up his own poultry farm. Starting from scratch, he worked all day to create a financially successful business. With money from his poultry farm, he also set up an even more successful construction company. When not working on his farm, he would spontaneously tour the country on his motorbike, often at furious speed, and taking extreme risk. He was never keen on planning, but would travel at the drop of the hat. A popular destination for Jaggi, was Chamundi Hill. In these days, he spent time with a group of friends, who were attracted to a more alternative lifestyle. For a time, they considered forming an idealistic commune, but it never materialized. Self-realization, age at 25, Jaggi had a successful, if unconventional worldly life, but all this was set to change. On the 23rd of September 1982, Jaggi, made a typical journey on his motorbike to Chamundi Hill. He had no particular reason for going, he just often felt drawn to this mountain. Whilst sitting on a rock, without any particular effort, he began to enter a meditative state. In his own words he writes, Suddenly, I did not know which was me, and which was not me. The air that I was breathing, the rock on which I was sitting, the atmosphere around me, everything had become me. And here I am sitting tears are flowing to the point where my shirt is wet, and I am ecstatically crazy. But, here I am, drenched with a completely new kind of blissfulness. Sadhguru later said, It is hard to describe the experience of enlightenment, but it felt not so much like an achievement, but as a homecoming, a remembrance of what we always had, the awareness of the infinite energy, and delight that makes up the universe. When he came back to his normal consciousness, it was evening, and several hours had passed. It was an experience that changed completely the direction of his life. He said he went up the mountain as a happy-go-lucky motorcyclist, and came back a mystic. Enlightenment never happens. It is there. It is always there. The sadhana that you do is just to see it is there. You are not doing sadhana to construct divinity within you. All you will construct is only ego. The Times of India, March 28, 2005 Shortly after he retired from his construction business, and for a year mostly sat absorbed in meditation, and experiencing the bliss of his new inner experiences. People began interacting differently with him, seeing in him some inner vision. People spontaneously asked him for advice, or to divinize the future. Even his physical appearance changed, with his voice becoming deeper, and his eyes wider, and brighter. After a year, he decided to teach yoga, and from small beginnings more were drawn to his yoga practices, and this began the formation of his yoga organization. 
In 1984, he met Vijay at a yoga program. They both felt a deep kinship, and despite objections from parents about caste suitability, they decided to marry. Jaggi felt that Vijay had been his sister in a previous lifetime when he was a yogi with little contact with his family. They had a daughter Radhe, who now works as a trained yoga instructor. In 1987, he toyed with the idea of developing his farm and making it a model cooperative farm, but just before the harvest, it burned down. He accepted the setback with typical detachment and took it as a sign to begin a new life path without any business entanglements and devote himself to traveling and teaching yoga. As more people became attracted to his path of yoga, a further change came over Jaggi. Rather than just a happy-go-lucky friend, he evolved into a role as a spiritual guru. To his disciples who were committed to the spiritual life, he could be strict in directing their spiritual growth and encouraging them to discipline their lives. Do not aspire to meet a wonderful person. Aspire to become the wonderful person that you expect others to be. Sadguru. In 1992, he formally established the Isha Foundation in the Velayangiri Mountains in the state of Tamil Nadu, South India. Through his Isha Foundation, he teaches yoga or the inner engineering. This program teaches an integral approach to life, combining hatha yoga, meditation, selfless service, and community-minded living. As his spiritual following increased, Jaggi continued to evolve. From a rebellious agnostic spirit, he increasingly took on the role of spiritual guru, and those who knew him well observed a shift as he became less familiar, but more the role of a spiritual guide. It was at this stage that he began to be known as Sadguru. Although he had often been skeptical of organized religion and spirituality, his own ashram began to develop a sense of order and rules similar to many other ashrams. He started to initiate people into the path of Brahmacharya. To Sadguru Brahmacharya is not about what we give up, but the opportunity to taste the real freedom of Brahman by going far beyond limited human pleasure. My whole work is to enhance people's perception. I have no teaching. I have no philosophy. I have no religion. I have no belief system. All I have is methods to enhance people's perception because only what you perceive, you know. More than a life, Sadguru. In 1997, after a series of intense spiritual practices, his wife Vijay entered Mahasamadhi, a rare state where a yogi makes a conscious decision to leave the body. The human in Sadguru was distraught to lose his wife, but as a guru, he felt a divine pride in her spiritual achievement. However, Vijay's father made an allegation that she had been killed by Sadguru, though a police investigation proved this claim to be baseless. 1997 was a critical year as Sadguru was hoping to initiate the Dhyanalinga, a spiritual energy center. But his wife's death put back the planned initiation. Around this time, the ashram was also attacked by people hostile to Sadguru and the ashram, including the uncle of one meditator. In the local press, accusations were made about activities in the ashram. However, Sadguru and the ashram weathered the storm by offering more yoga classes and meeting the skeptical local population. After many years in Tamil Nadu, Isha has become a valued part of the community. Sadguru has stated that he does not teach a superficial spirituality which tries to just make people feel better. He seeks a real spiritual transformation which involves challenging ingrained habits and vested interests of man. When real spiritual teachers seek this kind of transformation, it invariably causes some kind of reaction from those who feel threatened or jealous by this different approach to life. People ask me, Sadguru, what is the significance of your work? I said, tears. Every day millions of people across the world shed tears of love and ecstasy on a daily basis. This is my significance. I bring tears to people. The Dhyanalinga was finally consecrated on the 23rd of June 1999. Sadguru explains that those who meditate and pray near the consecrated ground will be able to get in touch with a deeper spiritual reality and make faster progress. No particular belief system is needed, just an openness of heart. In recent years, Sadguru has traveled around the world. He is a frequent guest on TV shows, forums, and student bodies around the world. These sessions frequently involve inviting questions from the audience. Sadguru has spoken around the world, from the Oxford Union to Davos and TED Talks. Sadguru designed a large state of Adiyogi Shiva as the world's first guru. In February 2017, Sadguru, it was inaugurated by India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The aim of the statue is to inspire people towards inner well-being through yoga.
This face is not a deity or temple, this is an iconic inspiration. In pursuit of the divine, you don't have to look up, because it is not somewhere else. Teachings, the spiritual process is just to create the right kind of chemistry, where you are naturally peaceful, naturally joyous. Encounter the Enlightened, 2001. A key part of Sadhguru's teachings is the belief, that individuals have the capacity to shape their thoughts, emotions, and actions through conscious awareness. He advocates healthy living, Hatha Yoga, meditation, and the cultivation of spiritual devotion. Sadhguru has said, devotees often look like a bunch of idiots, to the rest of the world, but the wisest ones are always devotees. This is a different kind of wisdom which logical minds can never understand. Sadhguru has also been keen to promote a spirituality that is embracing of life and not the asceticism of past Indian practices. When talking and answering questions, he often makes use of humor to puncture someone's pride and show that the spiritual life is not all about seriousness. Spirituality does not mean going away from life. Spirituality means becoming alive in the fullest possible way, so you are not just alive on the surface, you are alive to the core. The Times of India, the 10th of June 2009 in his book Inner Engineering, he argues, we all have the capacity to throw off depression and cultivate inner happiness through spiritual practices such as avoiding negativity and seeking to cultivate inner joy and happiness. He maintains his teachings is not a belief system or ideology but like technology. So inner engineering is a fundamental technology. I'm insisting it's a technology because it's not a philosophy. It's not a belief system. It's not an ideology. It's not even a teaching. Sadhguru's personality and method of interaction, Sadhguru's personality is multifarious. At times, he can be childlike, joking and teasing those close to him. At other times, he assumes his role as guru and can become a hard taskmaster. To some of his disciples, he may say nothing outwardly, seeking to draw them closer inwardly. At other times, in question and answer sessions, he appears as a rational, charming speaker with always a ready answer to any question. Outside the hectic travel schedule, he enjoys playing golf and driving very fast. He advocates a vegetarian diet and moderation in consumption. He has warned about the health and spiritual drawbacks of consuming alcohol, meat, tobacco and drugs.